If you're looking to save money on an Aeron Classic, do not buy a used one on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace without first watching this video. Before you take any Aeron Classic chair home, you absolutely need to consider the overall cleanliness of the chair. Now I know, smelling the mesh isn't a high priority for a lot of people, but you'd be surprised how much these chairs can stink. Whether it's just an old musty smell, someone's perfume, even worse, once you take it home, it's unlikely you can just return it. And once it's in your home or apartment, nasty odors can be unbearable. Next to the casters, I think the inner portion of the Aeron's frame is at the top of my list for nasty. This part of the chair is almost impossible to see without first removing the mesh inserts on the seat and backrest. Our refurbishing process requires that every mesh insert is removed so that the frame can be properly cleaned. You have to be extra careful here when putting the mesh back in place. If you don't remove the insert, you will be living with someone else's snacks inside your chair. Yuck. One of the more difficult parts on the Aaron to replace are the back and seat frames. This is why it's imperative that you're fully inspecting the frame for any visible cracks since this could be an expensive fix. Backrests don't have too many issues, but we have seen plenty of cracked seat frames on Aeron's older than 2003. While most of the seat frames are okay, these are more likely to experience some type of crack, whether it's just a hairline crack barely visible or a full-blown break. Now, Herman Miller did resolve this with a reinforced design that is much more durable on models that were made after 2002. Herman Miller's pellicle mesh is one of the reasons the Aeron is loved by so many. It is hands down the most durable mesh I've encountered, and I'm always amazed at how taut the mesh still is on older chairs. When compared to cheaper alternatives that tend to stretch after just a few years, the Aerons can feel almost new when they're over 20 years old. If the Aeron you're looking at has saggy mesh, this is a major problem that you'll definitely want to avoid. The previous owners also like to sit cross-legged or with one leg up, there is a good chance you'll find that the mesh is breaking down near the front of the chair. Once this pellicle mesh starts falling apart, there really isn't a good way to fix it. The smaller imperfections with the softer weave aren't as big of a deal as the wire mesh that really kind of holds everything together. When the mesh begins to fall apart, the seat will start to lose its suspension feeling and this could be something that needs to be replaced. The foam pad that rests underneath the waterfall front on the Aeron is probably the weakest part of this chair's construction. These are almost always completely flattened out and useless on older chairs we receive in for refurbishing. They are honestly also one of the grossest things about the chair as they tend to catch all of the previous users crumbs and drinks. Once this part has flattened out, you're much more likely to feel the hard plastic frame around the front of the chair. If you find a chair with this piece visibly flattened or even missing, I would definitely plan on searching out an aftermarket replacement. Depending on what functions the Aeron you've selected includes, you'll want to run through all of those adjustments just to ensure that they're functioning properly. Now the most sought after Aeron comes with three levers, which includes height adjustment, tilt limiter, and forward tilt function. You should have already checked the height adjustment, but now you'll want to verify that the tilt limiter function is working. When you have the tilt unlocked, I would also verify that the tilt tension is functioning. Now this part is definitely confusing since the Aeron Classic requires a ton of turns to adjust the tension, so just make sure you don't give up too soon. We've seen this take as many as 100 turns to feel the difference in the tension required to recline in the chair. The Aeron should also have a nice smooth tilt function when working properly. If your chair has forward tilt, make sure that you know how to actually test it as this can be a little bit tricky. Now you'll see, once I actually have the forward tilt working properly, I am sitting in a very upright position, which I personally don't prefer, but you can see it is locked in this position. There are three different types of arm styles available on the Aeron Classic. Fixed height, height adjustable only, and a multi-function with a height adjustment and pivot adjustment. If there is a height adjustment, you'll want to check to verify this is working. Number one, can you loosen it and move it up and down on the backrest? And then secondly, are you able to actually tighten it down and have it hold in place nicely? There are two different types of arm height adjustments. There's one that's a dial system. This is an older version. And then there's also the more modern latch system, which is much quicker and easier to use. Both will work just the same. Make sure again that you can tighten the armrests into position and have them locked firmly in place. Now, if your chair has a pivot adjustment, you'll want to verify that the arm is clicking and holding between the pivot ranges. The arm doesn't hold in place, the pivot mechanism is likely broken or just worn out. 
arm pads on the older Aeron Classics are incredibly durable. Considering how many of these seen, I'm always surprised how well they've held up. While they may be full of scratches, many times they're still holding up without any types of cracking or splitting occurring. Now these are constructed of multiple pieces with a sock type system over a pad and a plastic mold. These original arm pads are rock hard though, so a lot of times they aren't the most desired style. Herman Miller ultimately switched to a more comfortable PU pad that is formed into a plastic mold, creating a one piece look. Overall, these newer pads are softer and more comfortable than the originals. Aeron Classic comes with three different back types, and two of them will include a lumbar system. The two lumbar systems available on the Aeron are a height adjustable, very simple system that uses a PU pad with teeth that slide up and down the backrest. Alternatively, there is also a posture fit system. Now with the height adjustable system, you'll want to slide the pad off the backrest just to inspect it. First, you'll want to verify that all the little plastic teeth are still attached to the pad. Also, look to see if the PU pad is held up well. A lot of times, the first place you'll notice issues is near the ends by the plastic part that holds the teeth. Here, the pad will start to crack and break down. With the posture fit system, you'll also need to verify that it's functioning as you rotate the adjustment knob. This typically isn't much of an issue as the actual pad of the posture fit. Over time, we've seen that the pad starts to break down and can be a mess. Additionally, as you can see on this one, the actual plastic mold holding the pad in place is broken as well, so you want to check that out on the chair that you find. The cover on the top of the mechanism for the Aeron is removable. Now, this is designed to allow you to access the chair's mechanism and resolve any issues it may have, including adjusting a set screw on the cylinder for the height adjustment. This is definitely a weak point on the chair, and if the cover has been removed before, there's a good chance it could be broken and won't latch down again. Now this won't have any real impact on the chair, but it could be annoying and if it keeps falling off, your beautiful chair will definitely look incomplete. We've also noticed that the cover is one of the areas notorious for squeaking and creaking on the older Aerons. Chairs this age are liable to make sounds, just know it could be originating here. Herman Miller makes a solid product and we've seen enough original cylinders on a chair to know that there are still a lot out there. These could last another 10 years or fail tomorrow. It's important to verify that when you pull the height adjustment lever, the chair actually moves up at a good pace. If you find that it's sticking when it raises, moves slowly, or won't hold its height, when you sit down, this could definitely be a problem. Now, if the cylinder isn't working, that doesn't mean you can't fix it. There are aftermarket cylinders available online when you do a quick search. Now, some of those items will definitely be better than others, and I would look for something that comes with a warranty. Older cylinders and Aerons can definitely take some extra elbow grease when you try to remove them. A large pipe wrench is attached for extra leverage to get some of these cylinders removed. Arguably one of the nastiest places on an Aeron chair that's used is the casters. And to be honest, this is true for all used chairs we've seen come through our building. If the chair you found doesn't roll well, the casters are likely loaded with hair and other stuff is just picked up rolling on the floor. If you located this online, I would ask for a quick picture of the underside of the base so that you can see all of the different casters and what might be in them. If they're clean, you have a better chance they'll function okay. If they're nasty, plan on spending $20 to $70 for a proper set of wheels to replace those originals. Hopefully this video helped you understand what to look for when buying your next used Aeron Classic. And if you want to see how our refurbishing process works, check out the video where we go in-depth on our complete process. Thanks for watching.